Well, here's the first part of an interview with me. Uh, it's just kind of let fans know what's brought me to this point in my life, what's brought me to this point in my career. Uh, again, I'm, I know people have an issue with the chew. Uh, I do cardios in the morning, and then I usually chew a little bit because I don't want to eat right away. I want to burn extra calories. So I apologize for that if it's distracting, and those are the comments I get. Then moving forward, there will be no chew. Um, I hope it doesn't distract you too much. So I guess I should start from the beginning. I was born December 13th, 1986, to my mother, Anne, and my father, Mike. Um, as far as I can remember, my father wasn't really in the picture too long. Um, you know, that's kind of something, even pictures, you know, he was there here and there. Uh, but I don't think he was around for very long. Um, but I was very fortunate because my aunt and my grandmother lived with my mother at the time. Um, so a little background on my mom. Uh, she was very hardworking. She was in college at the time, and she was working at a bar. She actually lied about her age to work at a bar. Uh, to help my grandmother because my grandfather had passed away and uh, she wanted to live with my grandmother to help her pay bills and my aunts and everything were living in Calgary at the time. Um, so my mom kind of put her life on hold to help my grandmother uh, and she was very strong-willed. She always was, always growing up. Uh, I know she did everything she could for me and let me do absolutely everything uh, I ever wanted to do and I thank her for that because I think without without her by my side growing up I wouldn't be where I am right now. Um, so she was working at a bar, uh, she went to school, she became a jail guard. Um, I know we've heard some stories in the past of, of my mom with arm wrestling and stuff, but that's all true. Uh, you know, she was into powerlifting, she was into arm wrestling. Uh, as I said, she was a jail guard. You know, she was kind of a badass of a lady, and I think that's what's made me present myself the way I do as a wrestler, is because it's, it's natural to me. Um, I just, that, that was, you know, she was everything to me growing up because she was the one that was always there. Uh, I was the youngest in my family. I was the only child, but my cousins were much older, probably about 10, 11 years on me. And that's where the love for wrestling came. Uh, and no, I'm not skipping anything, really. I mean, I think I have pictures of my very first Christmas. As I said, I was born December 13th. So later on that month, I have a picture of me opening the old WWE uh, LGN figures. Uh, you know, that was just what was, was brought into my life through my cousins. And uh, there's pictures of me sitting in a wrestling ring, my cousins all around with the wrestling toys. So that was something that always stuck out to me. That and uh, my grandmother was a huge hockey and baseball fan. So we were a Toronto Maple Leaf and Toronto Jays uh, household. I never really got too much into hockey, uh, but I did get into baseball. So all grown up, you know, I was a little bit spoiled because I knew, I learned early that if my mother said no to something, my grandmother would say yes, and my grandmother said no, then my aunt would say yes. So living with those three kind of helped. Um, and I was given a lot, you know, I can't, I can't lie, I was definitely a spoiled child. Um, and most of it were framed around wrestling. Uh, you know, for instance, I remember Friday night, my aunt would, would always order pizza because my mom was working midnights at the time. Um, she worked midnight so that she could be with me during the day, send me off to school, see me before I went to bed. And then my aunt on Friday nights would order pizza, and we'd sit and we'd watch movies, and then Saturday morning, uh, we would go to the mall. But not before I watched WWE Superstars. I know I'm saying WWE, but WWF Superstars at the time. And I'd watch that, and then we'd go to the mall, and she'd buy me an action figure, which almost, almost 100% of the time was a wrestling action figure. I mean, my collection, uh, man, it's, it's, it's dense. You know, I have all the LGN figures, all the Hasbro figures, the the old rubber WCW figures. Um, it was all just kind of, it was all just what I followed, you know. So that was my Saturday day. She'd take me to get an action figure. We'd go out to a movie. And then Sunday, my mom would take me to the flea market. And at the flea market, they always had three VHS tapes for $20. So I would buy that. And uh, I mean, I still have them around. Some of them are still in Canada, unfortunately. And a lot of the pictures that I'll be discussing and times. Um, unfortunately, right now, I don't have the pictures in my possession because I live in St. Louis and my family still lives in Canada. And we just haven't brought everything over yet. Um, it's a kind of a hard process. You know, when I moved here, it was in my car. Uh, so I just packed everything I could. And then whenever my mom comes to visit, she brings stuff. But a lot of the pictures are still there. And I hope to get them soon so I can kind of post them up on Twitter or Facebook and just kind of give fans uh, an insight to, to what wrestling has meant to me throughout my life. Um, so that was me growing up, you know. Uh, then I, when I got to school, uh, I was a little bit, a little bit chubby. Uh, maybe that's an understatement. Maybe I was a little bit obese. Uh, and I think that was just because I got everything I wanted, you know. If I wanted a snack... As I said, I would go through the line. It would be my aunt, my grandmother, and then uh, my mom. And one of them would get what I wanted. So uh, 
a lot of my time as a young kid was spent inside the house watching wrestling videotapes, playing with wrestling action figures, and um, eating junk. So when I got to school, I was obese. But um, I remember vividly, you know, it's the cute thing for kindergarten teachers to ask their students, what do you want to be when you grow up? And my answer was always a pro wrestler. Uh, you know, this was ingrained in me. I remember watching wrestling before I was born, for instance. I still have the VHS tape of WrestleMania 1, which happened before I was born. But that's something that I grew up on, because with all the hand-me-downs from my cousins, uh, it's all I really cared about. You know, that was my life. I didn't care if kids in school picked on me because I was obese, because I knew as soon as I got home, I was going to put in that wrestling tape that I bought on the weekend, and I was going to watch it and just kind of escape in it. I was going to escape in the wrestling figures. I remember my mom got a video camera, and I would sit it up, and we'd have super shows with our wrestling action figures and record it all. Man, that was a big deal to me. Um, but throughout school, you know, I made my friends here and there, and usually the common connection was wrestling. Um, and then one time we went to a wrestling event in Oshawa at the Civic Auditorium. And this was still young, I'd say maybe seven, eight years old. And we ran into one of my mom's friend, Darlene, and it just happened that she was moving down the street from us. And she had a son named Jeremy. And Jeremy became a really close friend, and our connection was solely wrestling. I mean, it was go to school, come home. He went to a different school, and we'd meet up and we'd watch wrestling. Uh, we'd play with wrestling action figures. We'd just talk wrestling day in, day in and day out. Um, so throughout my school career, you know, sports weren't too big in Canada. Uh, I know it's kind of just a weird, weird thing when you're American and you're used to, you know, playing football or, or playing, you know, soccer or being on the. Uh, rugby team and stuff like that um, baseball teams it wasn't huge so outside of school I started playing softball you know that was the thing that was kind of known to my family a little bit especially my mother and that was one thing that I wanted to do as I said you know my grandma being a huge Jays fan I uh, played softball for, for many of my young years and I was a big kid so uh, I was known for home runs and that's about it couldn't run very much um, but I had power always just growing up I think it was a combination of of being brought up in that house with my mom being a power lifter and arm wrestler and just always being bigger. Um, you know, now maybe I'm not too tall or the biggest guy out there, but I think I've shown my strength and I think that all comes from that, you know. Um, so with softball on the side, you know, you get together with your friends. It was always wrestling outside of that. Uh, you know, we play softball with the team. We play a little bit. There's a open, open lot right behind my house and we play baseball a little bit, but it always turned into, into us you know, quote unquote, backyard wrestling. Um, to believe it or not, man, when I was growing up, I don't remember any of those ads, like, don't try this at home. And it was a little bit different. You know, now you have kids putting each other through tables and using barbed wire and thumbtacks in the backyard and doing dangerous moves. But back then, you know, we knew leg drops and elbow drops and hip tosses and body slams. And it wasn't as drastic as it is now. So I don't think that there was a disclaimer because of that. Um, and man, every kid in the neighborhood, you know, we always wrestled. And uh, I was known as a wrestling kid everywhere I went. In school, uh, commonly I was the kid that liked wrestling. You know, if, if it was bring in your favorite toy day in, in grade school, uh, everybody would bring in their toys and I would be the one bringing in a wrestler. Uh, that was just all I was about. Um, man, there's a lot to cover, isn't there? Well, let's go into to why I started liking wrestling outside of WWF, because that was also at a young age. I remember 1992, that friend I spoke of, Jeremy, uh, he got like a satellite or a box or something, and they started showing WCW pay-per-views. And I remember it being Great American Bash 92. And I remember seeing Dr. Death, Steve Williams, and Terry Gordy against the Steiner brothers. And something just connected with me about that match. I mean, it was different, you know, it wasn't, body slam and hip tosses it wasn't um grab a headlock for for 10 minutes it was just something about it that I gravitated towards uh later I would find out what that was but at that time it was just so much different it was something that appealed to me you know it was four big guys just slugging it out and man I was mesmerized I remember just searching these guys afterwards you know it wasn't the same it wasn't like we got on the internet and everything but we'd read magazines and try to find their names and I remember the back of magazines there was like tape trading places where you'd write in a letter and see what they had and they'd send you the catalog we used to do that at such a young age his, his uh I believe it was his cousin um was older or my cousin or, or something would order tapes for us because we couldn't do it so we'd use our allowance to order tapes 
and man, we just had a plethora of wrestling, and we started getting into Japanese wrestling and WCW and all this stuff, and uh, man, it was it was something different, and we really gravitated towards that. Um, and I would say, you know, even to this day, you know, we don't hang out so much, but Jeremy's still a close friend. Uh, you know, he helps out with some local promotions back in my hometown of Oshawa, and uh, he just he was always great to talk to about wrestling. Um, we still do, you know, we'll just hit each other up just to talk about wrestling, see what's new, and uh, that was always our common ground. You know, even as, as shitty kids with us fighting and getting in fights at the house and arguing all the time, uh, we always made amends because of wrestling. Um, so throughout that, that was the main goal. Um, moving on with school, I remember in grade seven, I believe it was, was the first time that a school got amateur wrestling. And you hear wrestling as a kid and you're a pro wrestling fan. You don't know what it is, but you want to be a part of it. And I jumped on the team instantly. And as I said, I was always bigger, so I was a heavyweight. So I didn't have a lot of people to wrestle, but naturally I knew what I was doing. Um, okay, I shouldn't say that. Naturally, I had a knack at wrestling, but my coach would constantly say, you were the most unorthodox wrestler I've ever seen. And I remember going undefeated that year. Um, and it was, it was great, but it was, just, it was just kind of a means to pro wrestling, you know? Um, grade eight, we trained back to our old school. I was still big, you know. I was still big, but I knew I wanted to be a pro wrestler. So something started clicking there. Um, I started paying a little bit more attention to working out, a little bit more attention to eat properly. I didn't quite do it, but I knew what to do, if that makes sense. You know, I knew out there that you had to get in the gym. I knew you had to eat proper foods. Um, so that was kind of in the forefront of my mind. And especially, you know, moving into high school, being the big kid, um, you're not going to... You're not going to see much success outside of of being just friends with people, if that makes sense. So um, that summer, uh, my father had passed away. As I said, we weren't really close, so we uh, I went to his funeral. Um, and, man, I met family that I didn't really even know I had. Um, you know, half-brothers, half-sisters, aunts, uncles that I'd never met in my life. Um, and then that summer... After that, my stepdad, who'd been in the picture since I was about five or six, um, his parents lived in British Columbia, so we drove out there. And that's where my love for the gym happened. You know, we were just in a country town. It was a little outside. It was called Maple Ridge, British Columbia, which is just maybe an hour and a half outside of, of Vancouver. It's a small rural town. And there was a complex near us with a swimming pool and weights. And we would go to swim and I'd keep looking up at the gym, you know, the, the gym oversaw the pool. And I'd keep just looking at the gym. And finally I said, you know, can we go work out? And he said, yeah. And I'd kind of just watch people lift weights and I would, I would impersonate them kind of, you know. I saw somebody doing bicep curls, I would do bicep curls. I would see somebody do bench press, I would do bench press. Uh, I just started falling in love with it. Um, that also got me just thinking about eating right. So when I got home after BC, uh, I decided that I was going to start eating right. I didn't go all the way through with high school the first year. Um, but that was kind of what brought my love to the gym. Um, so that, that kind of changed my life, I would say. That summer had a lot to do with, uh, with me being in the gym. Um, then moving into high school. Um, again, Canada high school is much different than here in the States. I would say that we still didn't have many teams. We had a wrestling team, which I joined, and a basketball team, which I joined, because a lot of my friends played basketball. Uh, you know, I was playing softball still with, uh, with just a team, you know, uh, that was close to me. But other than that, my friends played basketball. So I started getting into basketball as well as wrestling in grade nine. And uh, the pro wrestling upset the coach. I remember that. I would always... You know, he'd raise one hand if you won, and I'd raise both hands. And he'd be like, you can't be doing that. You know, that's considered cocky. And I didn't know better. I was just a pro wrestling fan. I saw the sportsmanship, and I wanted to be like that. Um, but, you know, we're about 15 minutes in, so I'll leave it at raising both hands and, and being an amateur wrestler and playing a little bit of baseball. And we'll get into more of, uh, more of my high school days. And it'll be interesting because I actually started wrestling training uh, the year after grade nine, I was 14 years old. So we'll get into that and then hopefully you'll, you'll stick with me.